This meeting is being recorded. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, folks. Michael Zuber, one rental at a time, back with Taylor from Life Goal Investments. How you doing, man? Doing great. Excited to be here. Let's talk bonds, baby. Yeah, I uh, I've been in, I've been on calls all morning. Uh, I had like one minute before our call started. I checked out the ten year note and see it's up fifteen basis points in the day, which I think it was up fifteen on on Friday as well. What the hell is going on with the ten year Treasury? I I have never experienced anything like this. This is nuts. This is violent. Uh, bonds don't move like this. Bonds do not move like they this. They don't move this like this in a week movement. or a month, not a day, yep. not back to back. Yeah, yeah. For context, if you look back, what, two years ago, the 10 year was at in the mid ones, and now it's at three eight. It's like, whoa, where is this coming from? And, and to be honest with you, this is not something that I expected. But you said prior to this call, and, and we can discuss what is that backward kind of behind the scenes, you know, puppet that's yeah. playing out right now. I actually believe and do think that this will come come to fruition, that the 10 years going to actually come back down here relatively soon. And when you think about the treasury yield curve, the front end of the curve is dependent upon what the Fed does. So if the Fed's going to continue raising, you're going to continue to see that one year, two year treasury start to move up as it perpetuates. And, and, and there's a little bit of forecasting there. So it already has some built into July, that yeah. one and two year treasury rate. But the back end of the curve, the 10 year is more dependent upon growth and inflation and just supply demand, but growth and inflation generally what drive the back end of that curve. And I do think that growth and inflation are starting to come down. Obviously growth is meaningfully and inflation is up for debate, but I think that inflation is starting to have peaked and roll over a little bit. So my belief is that from right here, the 10 year probably does start to settle back in and come down, but it's up 15 basis points. And to your point, 10 to 15 on Friday as well, which has been an absolutely violent, violent move. So I put this out on my daily financial news this morning when the 10 year was at 373 or 374. I this and I actually had yeah, this morning. Yeah, this morning. <laughs> like two hours ago. Yeah. Like literally two hours ago. Oh, it's so, so funny. Um, I put out this and I'd love to get your guess. Again, it's a pure guess, speculation, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. I said, um, what month might the 10 year treasury hit four for the first time? September, right? We got a couple of days left. October, November, December, January, or none of the above. Where do yeah, you come down I, on all of that? Yeah, maybe I, none of the I, above. I, I don't know. Yeah, I, I don't think so. It might get there. I, I, I don't, I don't know that. But I think that if it gets there, I think we're going to go down. End of the year will be lower than we are right now. So that's, I think that's, that that could happen for. Yeah, I think I think you brought this up last week, and I thought about it for the full week, and I want to give you credit. One thing that you said last week that felt odd to me, but I thought about it. It feels dead on is we're going to see the yield curve inversion steepen, right? Meaning the right. front end is going to go higher because it's very, very fed sensitive. But I think the 10 year, certainly maybe even the five year, but certainly the 10 year out, I think the inflation outlook is, is coming down. People, you know, again, the more you believe the fed, the front end goes up, but you also believe they're going to get this done, which means the back end comes down. So I think you're right. It steepens. But that doesn't mean that the tenure can't hit the psychological, like the market may push it there. It may not stay no. there, but it may hit it. It might, it might. You're right. And there are definitely, you were just about to say it, psychological bounds. When you hit that next full percent, it's like, okay, this is real now. People this will watch real that. Now. Yeah. Traders might try to push it through that. Yeah. That's kind of what, that, that's what winds up happening there. And to your point of, of kind of like the perpetuating inversion and, and it, getting to a higher magnitude. When you look back throughout history, usually the 10 year doesn't get on an inversion going into recession, doesn't get much more than 40 ish yeah, basis. 40 points, to, which yeah, 50 is extreme. Right now. Yeah. This, this is what this is. That's where it is right now. Before this call is 43 basis points. So that's kind of your norm as to a prelude into a recession. There was a time, and I don't remember if we discussed this last week or not, but there was a time back in the eighties when there was a full over 2% inversion. Oh, I didn't know Full, that. Over 2%. Now, granted, rates were a lot higher then. It, across the board, rates were wow. a lot higher then. But nonetheless, 
that's where things can get to and not saying we're going to go there. I, I don't think, I think that was an abnormality in a high rate. That was, that was a also. three standard deviation move, not a one. Yes, exactly. Exactly. And so we're kind of at, uh, you know, again, a, a standard deviation outside of normal right now, which is what happens prior to recession. But I think it probably does get a little bit worse here um, again, because I think that the fed has said very clearly they need to remain on the brakes, raising the front end of the curve. And I think the back end of the curve is more dependent upon that recessionary tail that I think is, is playing through right now. Yeah. I, again, as I sit here looking at this again, we're going to talk about the big boogeyman in the room, something I have said I'm afraid of for six months yeah. next. Uh, but I do think they're going to, I think the powers that be are going to push the 10 year to 4%. I think what's happening in the background is wall street is trying to muster up enough pain to force Powell, to test, basically to test Powell. And I think Powell is going to give him the middle finger. Yeah. I think so Powell's the other saying thing that, this time's different. The other thing that happens on Wall Street that isn't understood by retail investors is that what Wall Street will do is they will push things intentionally up oh, or down to extremes. And what they do there, the reason they do that is when stocks are coming down, they will short things to push them down further because what that does is creates a margin of error. So they say that, okay, I think that we'll just call it 3000 is the right number for the S&P 500. That's a long ways from where we are, but whatever, we'll just yeah. use that number. If we think 3000 is the number, we want to push it through 3000 down to exactly. 275. And then what we'll have is a margin for error. Yeah. Then we'll flip our position. By the way, in that margin for error, what you do is spook out all retail investors and wash out the market. Speculation, VIX, VIX explodes. And then they reverse their position. They buy. They have yeah. to buy to cover their short position. Yeah. And then they buy long. Um, and so yeah, they buy exactly. twice, essentially, and perpetuate the thing moving yeah. up. But that's why you have to be careful as a retail investor not to think, hey, let me try to catch the bottom. Because what happens is people try to catch a bottom, and then it washes out another 5% and they get out. Now they've lost 5%, the market rallies. Yeah. Yeah. So again, I do think I, I so again, so um, do you have a month? Do you think it might touch 4%? I understand you think it's down. At I, I think year? probably because we're at three, eight, five right now. And the movement has been 15 basis points the last two straight days or whatever it's been. I think you probably do get there, but you don't get much above it. And it's probably relatively soon within the next yeah. month, you'll see a 4% handle. And I do think that we get back down to the mid threes. I think probably the 10 year belongs around three, five, Three, three, four, three, five, somewhere in that ballpark is where the natural kind of settling place will be, I believe. Yeah. So I called October as well. I think it's going to be in October. And I don't know that it stays there to your point, but it's going to hit it. I just think Wall Street is going to, I really do think Wall Street is going to test Powell. And that's one of the vehicles that can test. I think this is, I really do think Wall Street's going to try to test him. He's like, we've had the Fed put for 40 years. Let's see how serious you are. And I think Powell's <laughs> going to flip them off. Well, he's, he's been doing it all year at this point. A Heisman, turn it, whatever you want to call it, whatever your analogy is. Yep. So the big yep. boogeyman, the thing that we tried in 18 and didn't work out well, the thing that could be yep. going on right now behind the scenes that could be breaking currents, currencies around the world is this thing called QT, quantitative tightening. Um, there's no question the Fed has to do it. You can't have the Fed with a $9 trillion balance sheet. It's just bad. Yep. The uh, Fed owns right now one third of the treasury market. One, one third of the outstanding treasury markets held by the Fed right now. And for context, you just mentioned the nine trillion number a year and a half ago when COVID hit initially, it was a four and a half, it was a four and a half trillion four, dollar four, two, Fed, four, Fed balance sheet. So they've doubled. Yeah, it's not good. You can't have the Fed being the buyer and owner of a third of treasuries. The good news is the world's falling apart. So you will have money coming from around the world here with the cleanest dirty shirt. But dude, I think QT is behind some of this, some of this rate move. It is, um, I always knew QT was going to break something. Um, it's, it's, it is happening. It do, but it's just started. September's the first month. They're at 90, you know, whatever it is, 90 billion. Yep. Oh, yeah. So for context, they announced, so we just, we just did uh, uh, a uh, Instagram post on this. And in 30 seconds, you can get an idea of exactly how it's affecting the market. They announced in January that QT was going to start later on this year, which it did start in June. But in January, the market started to tumble. When they actually started selling into the market was in June, perpetuated the downslope. And then last week was the time when they doubled their exposure of what they were selling, perpetuating the downward trend in stocks. And so it's it's uncanny when you line those dates up with what the market's reaction was. It's almost a perfect overlay of the two things. And 
I think what you have to realize is that quantitative easing in general is kind of a new concept for the world at, at large. So rates are something that go back to kind of the origination of the Fed and, and what they've done to manipulate markets. Um, and I don't mean that necessarily in a negative way, um, but quantitative influence, easing is not influence something- Influence markets. It, influence markets, yes, better better put. And, and, and a lot of times in a needed way, like right now, yeah. you know, they need to step in. Um, but quantitative easing is, is not, and we have never, uh, and we have never tightened We've never tightened into an inflationary environment. So oh, when you think about an inflationary environment, in that, yeah, oh. right. What you do, obviously, in in an inflationary environment, is you raise rates, which which drives bond yields up. But also, what you're seeing now is the biggest owner of those bonds is also selling them into the market. So you have rates driving up, and and therefore pain in the bond market. And you also have the supply demand imbalance because now you have the person that was buying the most flipping and selling into the market, driving rates up even quicker. Yeah. Because when you add more supply in the bond world, the price goes down and the rates go up. Correct. Yeah. There's an inverse. Yeah. It's always confusing when you're talking about bonds, when you're talking about yields or prices. So yields have an inverse relationship with right. prices. As yields go up, prices come down. Yeah. And just what we've again, seen across the board yeah. this year is Think about being price. Target selling more TVs. How do they get rid of the TVs? They lower the price. In the bond Correct. world, the price goes down, rates go up. QT is this is part of the reason I think rates are going to four. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, and this is this is a a total unknown, a total unknown as to how this plays out is is boogeyman. very. It's the boogeyman. It's very opaque. And, and to your point though, Michael, one thing that we can kind of I don't know, rest on a little bit is the fact that when you look around the world right now in developed markets, our rates are high relative to the other developed trusted nations in the world. And so what you do get is some flow of foreign currency into the US. At one point, you had China being a massive, massive buyer. They have backed off some. So uh, 10 years ago, they owned 14% of our treasury market. Right now they own four. So they've been a, a massive reversal in demand out of the Chinese market. But if you look at German 10-year bond, it's it's sitting at basically half of what our yields are right now. So you got to imagine that someone does step in with big pension money, big insurance money, big sovereign debt money. Um, now you get, you get this to 4%. There's going to be worldwide buyers. Yeah. There just is. And not, not, to, not to mention I'm talking to one, right? Oh, and exactly. I'm not talking about 10-year. No, I'm not yeah, talking about I'm, tenure, but what was the conversation last week? Yeah, I'm going to buy. I Again, I'm looking at it. Now, I'm probably going to wait till December because, again, I don't want to buy it 4-1, have it go to 4-3, I lose this. But I'll be, I will be buying bonds this year. Yeah. Probably probably the one year probably, or maybe latter three months, something like that. Yep. Yeah, yeah we talked, what, what, what did I say last week? I said, listen, there used to be the acronym TINA that everyone talked about. There is no alternative to stocks. When bond rates are at 1% to 2%, everyone looks at them like, whatever. Yeah. You know, like, yeah. I don't want anything to do with that. Now you look at it and that dollar that, that could go into the stock market is not going into the stock market because now you can get 4% guaranteed on a treasury and guaranteed is fully guaranteed by the U S government. We've never defaulted on our debt before. I don't see any reason why we do uh -oh. any time in the near future by any stretch of the imagination. So you're guaranteeing yourself a 4% return. Yeah. And again, myself included in this statement, we have very short memories. Why is 4% good? Because I remember 0.23, right? It's 800 or whatever it is percent better. It, you right. know, my mom might say, oh, well, I got 16 and 4% is bad. Right. Well, that's not my memory. My memory is point, you know, five, five or whatever. So it's right. all about kind of, you know, recency bias, I guess. Oh, oh no doubt. And you look back to the 70s, 80s, you had Fed funds, Fed funds rate, which is now, you know, is crazy high right now. It was at 20%. Twenty yeah. percent is where Fed funds peaked. So it's a it's it's a new world. It's it's different than it was, and it has been this way for a while. But we're actually seeing it now revert back up for the first time yeah. in forty years. Yeah, I think part of the reason rates are going up not only is because Wall Street wants to kind of test the Fed, but I think QT is the boogeyman. I've said for six months, I have no idea it's gonna. The the financial system is not as robust as any of us would like. There are points of fragility. I think we're about to find a couple in the next three to six months. Yeah, the last time we saw a big movement like this was 2013. Um, and what you saw was the 10 year go from, take these with a little bit of grain of salt, but I'm gonna be very close. The June at one six to the end of the year at 3%. And it reverted very quickly because they stopped the tightening process. Uh, where can people find you? Again, you put out a great post today or the last couple of days that you go check out on QT. Where is this? 
Yeah, find us at Life Goal Investments on Instagram. So again, daily stuff coming out, mostly macroeconomic data, and then trying to boil it down into real simple terms. Awesome. Thanks, buddy.